Hey guys, it's Yu Yu. Welcome back to my channel. Okay, are you one of those people who wonder where their money went? You're at the end of the month and then you're like, I don't know where my money goes. I don't really spend that much. Because if you are one of these people, trust me, you are not alone. I definitely used to be one of these people. And now I know exactly where every single one of my pennies goes. There are so many tools available for you to utilize to determine where you actually are spending your money. Because in real life, it seems like a few categories really determine where your money is actually going. In fact, what I'm kind of describing here is the Pareto Principle. Essentially what it means is that for most of the outcomes of life, 80% of all of those consequences can be attributed to 20% of the causes. This is also known as the 80-20 rule. So today I'd like to talk about how you can apply the Pareto Principle to your own personal finances. Namely, using a Pareto chart to track your spending and figuring out what those categories are for you and whether or not that aligns with your current spending goals. So this will be a very how-to, step-by-step type of video. I am going to be using Google Sheets here. You can create a Pareto chart with Excel. I think there's actually like a predefined uh, chart settings for that if you have a newer version of Excel. But in this case, I just wanted to make it the most accessible for most people who just have internet and they can easily create a Gmail account if they want to. Now, once you actually are set up to use Google Sheets, the main thing that you need to have to actually track your spending is to have an idea. And by idea, I mean a very, very concrete knowledge of how you're actually spending your money. So if you do budget, then just go look at your past budgets and figure out, you know, which month you want to look at or if you want you can get an average of your spending in different categories of your budget. If you don't have a budget or don't use a budget regularly, I suggest going through your bank and credit card statements and just go through the tough process of confronting what you've done. <laughs> For a lot of people, this isn't a big deal. For a lot of other people, um, this could be a nightmare and I'm sorry, but it has to be done if you want a very true representation of what you're actually spending on. Once you have that, you can now use that data and put it into a Pareto diagram. Okay, so here is some spending data that I have already put into my Google Sheets uh, spreadsheet using these categories of housing, savings, investments, giving, food transportation, bills and subscriptions, health and fitness, wardrobe, entertainment, and student loans. I'm calling uh, this particular spending, spending from person one. So what I did was put the total monthly spending for each category in the column next to it. If you add all of these numbers up, you will get a sum of $3,000. In all of the case scenarios that I'm gonna use, I will be using a basis of $3,000 take home pay. That may be higher or lower than what you earn, but I just wanted to make the math simple. What you're gonna do after you put your monthly spending next to the column that shows the categories, you're gonna add another column and label it total percentage. So here you're gonna calculate the percentage of spending that that particular category has on your total monthly spending. So we're gonna say equals, um, this monthly spending amount divided by the sum of all of these categories. And we're gonna just add a dollar sign here to lock those in when we drag them down. So drag that down and then you finally have the percentage values of all of your categories. And if you highlight all of this, it should sum to 100%. Now, what I'd like to do is add a filter. So you can go to data, um, I already have a filter somewhere else on the sheet, so I'm gonna create a, f oh, not there, <laughs> not there. Let me remove that filter, add another filter, there we go. I'm going to just sort the monthly spending from Z to A, so it's just gonna sort from largest to smallest, basically. So now you can create another column called cumulative percentage. So you just wanna see the addition of all of the percentage values um, in the previous categories to make sure that they all add up to 100% and this will help you ensure that you're accounting for all the categories that you spent money on this month. This is the only kind of like weird part about this. You're just gonna make that top category that you spend the most in. That's just gonna equal the total percentage value. So that's, you're gonna start off with 30% just cause that's the highest category. In the second category that you have, this is actually going to be equal to the sum of the 
first two, but you're gonna make sure it always starts on C3 here. This way, it will always start counting from that very first cell, and then this second cell is the one that's gonna be varied um, whenever you do drag it down. And you're gonna divide that by the sum of all of these percentages, which is honestly just gonna be 100%. <laughs> so, so then you drag it and you populate the rest of the cells here. Now, once you have your cumulative percentage, you can actually create your chart. Let me just make this bigger because the filters make it hard to see all the labels. Now I'm just gonna highlight all of this, insert, insert chart, and a chart is going to appear. <laughs> okay, so now you have your chart, but it doesn't really look like a Pareto diagram yet. So you're gonna click on this and go to setup. Um, the first thing I wanna do is make it a combo chart. So you're gonna just switch that there in the settings. The next thing you wanna do is make sure that the X axis is the spending category and it looks good. It starts off on the first category that you have and it goes in correct order. So it starts in housing. Next up, we wanna remove the total percentage category because it's just not part of a Pareto diagram. You really are only looking at the cumulative percentage. Now we're gonna go into custom Customize, and we're going to go to the cumulative percentage uh, series and here we're going to make sure that that is aligned but we're going to change the axis from the left axis to the right axis. So now we see this beautiful red line that we are going to switch to black and then we can go to the monthly spending series and um, make sure that's in columns. I don't know why it says that. Oh, that's weird. Yeah, there's no, there wasn't a fill color before, but I switched that to pink. You can change it to whatever color you want. Now you have your Pareto diagram, which is really nice. And obviously you can resize it so that you can actually read all of your categories, but this is basically it. For this particular person, a lot of their money is going towards housing, transportation, food, and maybe wardrobe. The main thing is to have you figure out whether what you're seeing on this chart actually aligns with your financial goals. If it doesn't, oh well, like you can still change things. And if it does, then you can obviously look for ways to maybe improve that goal or try to kind of achieve a bit more of a balanced lifestyle if that's what you're interested in. This is just one example of someone, you know, spending a lot on housing, transportation, and food, not really saving, not really investing. It seems like this person has student loans, but they're not really making a concerted effort to pay them off rapidly if this is a recurring monthly cost. Now, if you look at person two, you'll see that this person, on the other hand, um, is spending a lot of their income on student loans, about maybe less than half on housing, and very, very little in comparison on their other categories. Honestly, this is a lot like what my own budget used to look like, except I was spending a lot more on housing. Um, it was worth it for me, but yeah, I could have done better. My housing was a lot higher than just like $600, but I was definitely sending a significant portion of my monthly income towards my student loans, and I was definitely trying to cut back on all other categories. Um, so it definitely looked a little less balanced, and you could tell that a lot of my expenses were based on my student loan contributions and my housing expenses. The next example I have here is a bit more um, different. So this person spends two thirds of their $3,000 income on investing and that's awesome. Like that's really cool that anyone could send $2,000 towards their investment accounts. They're saving a little bit, but I guess if you're investing that much, it doesn't really matter. They probably already have an emergency fund set up. As you can see, no housing and no student loans. It looks like this person may be living with their parents. Wow, goals. And then we have the last person. This person seems to have a nice spread of their categories. They seem to be spending in all of them. There's nothing at zero. $1,000 in investments, uh, $750 on housing. That's 25% of the $3,000 monthly income, which is perfectly appropriate for housing expenses. 
$400 on savings, so maybe they are working on building up their emergency fund or saving up for a down payment. Giving, $350, so that's over 10% of their income every month. $300 on transportation, entertainment, $250, $200 on food, $90 on wardrobe, $80 on health and fitness, $60 on bills and subscriptions, and $50 on student loans. Hopefully that's their last student loan payment, I don't know. You can really kind of see here that investments in housing here are the two main categories that this person is spending on, but obviously you can have it a little bit more spread out if that happens to apply to you. So I hope that you guys learned something from this. I really encourage you to create a Pareto chart for your own expenses just so that you can kind of see what you're actually spending on and you're not wondering where your money actually goes. This is super quick, super easy to make, and it's a very concrete view of what you're actually doing with your finances. So thank you guys so much for watching. Please like this video if you enjoyed it and subscribe to my channel for more related content.